Do you ever wonder about the significance of street names? Or maybe you enjoy walking through the countryside of North Wiltshire and Oxfordshire, where you could be forgiven for ignoring, or not even noticing, the width of the ditch you've just walked alongside, or that the hedgerow appears to have a double row of trees, or the strange brick structures hidden in the undergrowth. But stop and take a closer look, and you might just discover that you've stumbled across the long-abandoned remains of the Wilts and Barts Canal. The canal was formally abandoned back in 1914, with the land being transferred to local authorities or sold off to neighbouring landowners, and whether by construction or decay, it slowly faded out of sight, save the occasional town centre reminder. But that was then. A hundred years later, and the canal is going through a process of rebirth, so let me take you back in time to explore the history of Wiltshire's Lost Waterway. In order to understand the history of canals, the obvious first question is why the need for them? Transporting cargo up to the middle of the 18th century was by means of pack horses or horse and cart. This on roads that were generally little more than tracks, typically carrying a maximum load of less than two tonnes. The increasing demands of the Industrial Revolution meant that manufacturers needed a much bigger supply of materials and then a way of getting their finished goods to market. A better transport system was needed. So if we go back to our horse and cart, if we now take that same horse and hitch it up to tow a canal barge, that barge, depending on its size, could be carrying up to 50 to 60 tonnes. So now we know the need for canals, we move on to the second part of this question, why specifically a canal in North Wiltshire? There were two primary reasons. The first was to take coal from the Somerset coal fields to their expanding commercial and domestic markets throughout northern Wiltshire and into Oxfordshire. The second was to provide an alternative route for carrying goods from Bristol docks to their markets in London, as ship owners were wary of allowing their ships to travel up the hazardous English Channel. The original route for this was the River Avon from Bristol to Bath, from where a new canal would be built via Bradford on Avon to Semington, north to Chippenham and Carn, and then east towards Marlborough, Hungerford and Newbury, where it would connect with the River Kennet and then onto the River Thames at Reading. However, pressure from the two Devizes MPs forced a change of route to what we now recognise as the Kennet and Avon Canal. This, though, left no route from Semington north, so a new canal was devised which would become the Wilts and Barks. This goes from the Kennet and Avon at Semington, north through Melksham, between Chippenham and Carn with branches into both towns, on past the now Royal Wooden Bassett into what was then the tiny village of Swindon, where the North Wilts Canal branched off to Cricklade. The main route continued past Shrivenham, Uffington and Wantage, with branches connecting into both Shrivenham and Wantage, before finally heading up to Abington, where it completed its journey by joining the Thames. 1793 saw the Earl of Peterborough convene a meeting in Wooden Bassett Town Hall, at which a committee of 28 gentlemen was formed to oversee the construction of the canal. They also agreed the appointment of Robert and William Whitworth as the canal's engineers. In April 1795, an Act of Parliament granting permission for the canal was passed, following which a company was formed to build and run the canal. It's worth noting at this point that Wantage and Abingdon were in the county of Berkshire up until 1974, when a local government reorganisation moved the boundary, absorbing a swathe of North Berkshire into the county of Oxfordshire. The Wilts and Barts Canal's name is written into law by the 1795 Act of Parliament, hence it remains the Wilts and Barts Canal. Canal construction began in 1796, starting from Semington, then driving north until it finally reached Abingdon on the 10th of September 1810 where it was ceremonially opened by a barge full of the directors of the company passing through the last lock on the canal to enter the Thames. The following years saw steady levels of traffic until the 1830s when Brunel brought his railway through the area to again connect London and Bristol. 
Brunel, needing a way of getting materials to and from his construction sites, realised that this already existed in the form of the canals. So it was that the period 1830s to 1850s became the most profitable for the Wilson Barks. Unfortunately though, these profits hit the buffers soon after the railway was opened, with more and more traffic moving from the slow cumbersome canals to the much quicker railways. This pattern of declining revenues continued throughout the second half of the 19th century, forcing the company and its successors into liquidation. With no money for maintenance, wear and tear meant that structures such as locks and bridges became increasingly difficult to use, and even travelling between these structures became hazardous due to silting and weed growth within the canal bed itself. Things came to a head on a stormy Sunday night in January 1901, when a four-foot section of Stanley Aqueduct's Western Arch collapsed, draining a three-kilometre stretch of the canal between Pewsham and Stanley Locks into the River Marden below. The canal company had neither money nor motivation to repair this damage, leaving this part of the canal unnavigable, and while some traffic did continue on other stretches, this, combined with its worsening state, meant that the canal was effectively just a stagnant, unhygienic ditch. This was the excuse that Swindon Council wanted, and in 1914 they successfully applied to Parliament for an act of abandonment. The result of this was that the canal ceased to exist and the land was sold or transferred to local authorities or neighbouring landowners. And that was the end of the story. At least it was, until Jack Dolby came along. Jack had an interest in discovering and walking the old waterways especially at a time when they were just starting to come back to life, and in 1971 he published a book entitled The Wilson Barts Canal. This attracted the interest of a group of enthusiasts who came together to form the Wilson Barks Amenity Group. Their objective was to preserve what was left, even though some of these structures were in a pretty poor state by this time. But moving forward the idea changed from preservation to one of restoration, and the Wilson Barts Canal Trust was formed with the objective of restoring the canal to full operational condition. So where are we today? It will not be possible to restore the canal exactly as it was, as sections of it through Melksham and Swindon for example have been developed and built over, but plans have been drawn up to divert around these areas. The objective of the Wilson Barts Canal Trust is to fully rebuild the canal as close as possible to the original design, and to this end a team of hard-working volunteers are busy working on all aspects of restoration. These include, but are not limited to, administration, planning, fundraising, organising events to raise awareness of the project, and of course the teams who are physically restoring, rebuilding and then maintaining the canal. Where sections have been fully restored, we do, where possible, run boat trips raising awareness and much needed funds. So what can you do to help? Well you can send us a donation to help our work, or you could attend one of the many events we organise. Or best of all, why not come and join us? You can become a member of the Trust through the website or social media sites and then you can come along and volunteer. But don't be put off by this, volunteering involves so many different aspects of our work, both muddy boots and clean shoes. So whatever skills you have to offer, we can find a job for you. If you just want more information, go to the website at wbct.org.uk or follow us on Facebook, Twitter or Instagram or send us an email to info at wbct.org.uk If you belong to an organisation that you think would benefit from a talk to learn more about our work send an email to talks at wbct.org.uk Well thank you for listening and I hope you've enjoyed this brief introduction to the Wilson Barts Canal.